August 2023. And this is what we saw this night. A lot of armored vehicles living on air force. F-40 to be precise. This is this is is gonna get out of hand very fast if nothing is done about this. Right. They say as world pressure mounts on leaders of coup in Niger, the junta ends mandates of uh, US and France and Nigeria and Togo. If you don't know what's going on in Niger right now, they're kicking out the French. You see, I think Niger, uh, Senegal, Mali, um, Burkina Faso, Togo, I think they're former French colonies. Well, never really former French colonies because French still control those countries a lot of them still uh, in niger they still use the the f french currency the franc france don't even use that currency no more they use euros now so you're forcing the country to use a currency that you guys don't even use no more currency that's so devalued nobody even wants it at what point are africans going to wake up and realize Oh, we've been taken for a ride for decades, for hundreds of years. At what point is the stupidity, is our foolishness going to stop? Like, for real. Like, I'm going to make this video so real. People might hate me for this, but I'm just going to speak my mind and just take it as you see it. The Europeans, right? The first world country, if you want to call them that never actually left their colonies they left on paper but they found a way to rule indirectly which is probably the best way because why would you want to be subjected to mosquitoes and malaria and diseases in the country where you're not acclimated to and the people want you to leave like all right fine we're going to leave but we'll put our vassals we're going to put our puppets over there to keep ruling the country on our behalf so they'll go back to the comfort of their country while the people, the citizens of those African countries that believe, that are now celebrating, oh, the French have gone, oh, the British have gone, oh, we've got our people back in power. Not all skin folk is skin folk. At all. They are put there to keep their boots on your neck. That's the main purpose. We don't have leaders in Africa. Thank God I'm out of that country. Man. See, a couple of years ago, when CNN started this rumor that Trump called these third world countries the shithole countries, and were like, this whole big hoopla about it. I'm like, what? what did he say wrong? These are shithole countries being ruled by dictators and crazy people that steal the resources of their own country, their own people, stealing the future of their own kids. Well, their biological kids are, you know, schooling abroad and living in million dollar condos. The children of their country are broke, poor, working in mines, mining uranium, getting radi getting radioactive poisoning from leakage that the French never even bothered to seal. You have, they, have, they have spillage and leakage over there. You have kids being poisoned by radiation poisoning over there in Niger. Imagine, just, just listen to this, for example, and see if it makes sense to you, right? Just, just listen. France, right, gets uranium from Niger, and that powers the French power grid for the whole country, like eighty percent of France's power grid. But Niger, only fifteen percent of Niger have power, have electricity. Electricity is development electricity is modernity electricity is civilization your internet can't work nothing can work if you don't have electricity to power the whole country 80 percent of france is powered by the uranium gotten from niger but only 15 percent of niger have power make that make sense and these people have been living like this for decades for decades Little kids working in minefields, working in uranium mines, gold mines. This is madness. 
When are this, well, the, pe people are starting to realize now. The Africans are starting to realize now that, look, we can't keep going like this. And the military in Niger have taken over. One thing you need to know about military people, about soldiers, these are the, the most patriotic people you will ever meet. For people to put their life on the line for the sake of their country, it doesn't get no patriotic than that. Get their limbs blown off and everything. And these politicians do take advantage of them because I'm talking about the Western politicians now, these civilian politicians do take advantage of the patriotic mindset of soldiers, of the military people. So you get a bunch of Marines in some desert country in the Middle East, stealing resources, blowing shit up, bullying people, basically. And then they say, oh, we're doing it to protect our country, to keep our country safe because they hate our freedoms. They want to take over our country. Like, really? They fight in tanks with slingshots and, and catapults and trebuchets, like like back in the Middle Ages. How do how can they take over your? You just you gonna read? Just use your brain for five seconds. You are go, oh you are over there getting sniper shot, getting your limbs blown off. But the politicians are walking away with the loot. Their kids are living la vida loca and living life of luxury. It's always the poor man's kids that goes and dies for the rich man's war. The Marines are waking up. Everyone's waking up at this moment now. This age of Aquarius we're getting in. This is, this is the age of awakening. People are going to start waking up now. And for Africans, you have to be willing to die for freedom. If you're not willing to die for it, you're not going to get it. There's so much resources in Africa. That, that's like the, the main problem africa have is like there's so much resources there but less weaponry you can't protect you can't protect the resources you have of course people are going to come there and steal it of course it's tales all this time this is what happens the less protected get screwed over by the more powerful so if you want to protect what you have you have to find a way to up your military game but niger is doing that now they're siding with russia russia is interested in business they're not interested in colonization but the west are interested in colonization because the same people that are ruling the west right now are descendants of the same people that colonized that region you didn't vote these people in this unelected bureaucrats running running stuff who voted victoria newland in in the in american politics you don't vote these people in these people are placed there they inherit power that's why they're screwing over the west right now because they they, they, they don't value what the West have because they didn't work for it. They inherited it. You, see, you, you, you understand what I'm saying? So Niger now, the military have taken over. Like we can't have this uh, civilian puppet government of the West anymore. Screwing us over. We've suffered enough. We're going to take our destiny into our own hands. But what do you, what do you know? France is not having it. France is like, you got to put that man back in the in office. Put the man we put over there, the civilian government, democratic government, quote unquote, because there is no democracy, dem democracy anywhere in the world. It's, democracy is just a cloak to cover oligarchy. Oligarchy is a system of government where the richest, the most powerful rule, the top 1% to 2% rule, like the Bill Gates and the Warren Buffett's and the George Soros and the Rothschilds and Rockefeller, these families, they, they, they control, they own the West. They own the West. America has been bought and paid for a long time ago. They own the country. America is an oligarchy. It's not a democracy. It was a constitutional republic, but it's not right now. If anything, it's a kleptocracy. Because these oligarchs are criminals. A story for another day. So Niger... I'm not having it. They're kicking the French out. Kicking the citizens out. Kicking everybody out. America's got base in Niger. And where do you, <laughs> where do you think the base is? Around where the, the, where the, where the, the mineral resources are. <laughs> of course, that's where it is. So Wagner Group, the Russian Wagner Group, those, these niggas are like superheroes, man. They're in my, um, they're helping fight terrorists in Mali. 
terrorists that that that's that sprung from Libya after America and the West destroyed Libya and you have like a bunch of terrorists there that armed to dethrone the government using American weapons and American cars. Now they're trickling down over Algeria, down, 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 Niger, down to Mali. It's like terrorism everywhere. Boko Haram springing over in Nigeria. My my birth country. <laughs> Nigeria, man, these motherfuckers. So Niger now, or like I said, are kicking them out. The French are not having it. The French, the West in general, uh gathering their vassals, their African leaders that they control, to now go over and try to fight a war with Niger to bring back, to reinstate the president. <laughs> this is a bloodless coup, by the way. Nobody died. It's a very peaceful coup. Like in African history, this is like the, the most peaceful coup ever. Nobody died. They're just like, well, you guys are stealing from us for so long. We're going to arrest the president, take power. They, I think they've released the president now. They didn't harm anybody. They just want their mandates back. They want their sovereignty. Questo è un bambino che lavora in una miniera d'oro in Burkina Faso. Il Burkina Faso è una delle nazioni più povere del mondo. Per il Burkina Faso che ha l'oro, la Francia stampa moneta coloniale. In cambio pretende che finiscano nelle casse del tesoro francese il 50% di tutto quello che il Burkina Faso esporta. L'oro che questo bambino si infila in un cunicolo per tirare fuori finisce per lo più nelle casse dello Stato francese. Allora la soluzione non è prendere gli africani e spostarli in Europa. La soluzione è liberare l'Africa da certi europei che la sfruttano e consentire a queste persone... Well, French, they're not having it. They can't go into direct war right now in in Africa because it's going to spill like a, open up a whole can of worms. Like people are going to start protesting in France because this Niger is like the second poorest country in the world after Haiti or something. But those two countries, Haiti and Niger, are like one of the most richest countries in mineral resources. Is it a coincidence that they're the poorest? Because they're being fucked. And they, you, you can't fuck people over. Sorry, pardon my French. You can't screw people over unless you instate the governments you want there that do your bidding. That's the story of Africa. And now, because Russia has got a foothold in Africa, doing business over there, securing their borders, helping them fight terrorism, it'll be a big issue. If France now goes over there and try to pump its chest, because Russia is going to handle them. So what, what, what are they going to do now? Fine. Let's get the ECOWAS country. The uh, It's, it's kind of like the UN. No, not the UN. It's kind of like the NATO of Africa. But it's a bunch of countries that are really controlled by the West. So they had a meeting in Nigeria's capital, Abuja, last week. And what was the aim of the meeting? To try and gather the armies to try and get like a go ahead from the Senate committee so they could go to war with Niger. You see what I said? Not all skin folk are king folk. These people here are trying to fight and kill their own brothers and sisters for the Europeans. And when I say Europeans, I don't I don't mean like just just white Caucasian people. No, nah, no, nah, I mean the the, the the demonic leadership. <laughs> the crazy corrupt leadership of the West. I'm not just talking about the regular average Joe that's just trying to go to work and live the life. No. And the the, the the Western evil leadership is what's making this whole anti-white racism now skyrocketing in every other part of the world. And when it comes to like the majority of the world, there's more people of color in the entire world than Caucasians. So this whole anti-white ideology that's springing up right now because of the corrupt and evil Western leadership is not favoring anyone at all, least of all the native Europeans. They're getting, like I said, the Western leaders are getting these morons over here to go to war with Niger and Burkina Faso, I think the Burkina Faso and Mali, but some other countries in that same region the French-speaking countries 
a siding with Burkina Faso, with um, Niger. They're like, they're going to side with Niger, with Niger. They're going to fight for Niger. And the leader of Burkina Faso, a uh, 35-year-old captain, 35-year-old guy, young guy, that took power, another military coup. And he's very close with Putin. He did, he's like friends with Putin. This guy over here. And he's saying, hell to the no. If this Echoes country want to come over here and try to, you know, pump their chest and act all macho, we're going to handle them. And a lot of these this countries are being trained by Russian military. You've got Russian forces over there via the Wagner group. They're there. So if Nigeria think <laughs> it's going to, oh man, Nigeria right now is a mess. Inflation is through the roof. The money is worth nothing. The money is like toilet paper. Just take it and wipe your ass with it. The currency is trash. It's been debased so much. Fuel scarcity. Imagine the number 15th or number 16th oil, uh, uh, oil producing country in the world. They can't refine their own oil. Right? Cost of living is through the roof. You can't even get fuel. Can't get gas. Can't get petrol. Because it's so expensive. Cost of living so, so, so high for the poorest people in the world. Make that make sense. People are starving in Nigeria at the moment. But the president is trying to go to war. Are you serious? War is the last thing Nigeria needs right now. And it's just going to create animosity towards Nigeria amongst the rest of the African countries. Because even lots of the African ECOWAS countries do not want to go to war with, 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 with Niger. Africa right now is so... Damn, man! The poverty right now is, is through the roof. Why are you going to fight war? There should be a war on poverty. Not a war to try to keep the colonial boots on the neck of your neighbors. Uh, wh what? A lot of my, my Nigerian uh, family members, my Nigerian friends like... Now realizing the election that happened in March, the guy that won the election, Peter Ob, right? He won the election fair and square. But this other guy, Tinubu or whatever his name is, the little old, the old dude, like 100 years old. If you think Joe Biden is bad, <laughs> this Tinubu guy is Joe Biden 2.0. He's put there by the West. Let's put Peter Obi aside, although he won, but fuck it. He's in court trying to fight the whole case. But even the court is corrupt. Everything is corrupt. So he was put there just so they have their person, so the West have their person there. And this Tinubu now is trying to seek uh, congressional powers or Senate powers, Senate go ahead, Senate approval, senatorial approval, to go to war with Niger, which they've refused, but it's trying to find a back channel. Why? This man has been in politics way before I was even born. He's a billionaire in dollars. Probably in pounds too. He's a multi-billionaire. Not this man in this on screen. Not this man on screen. Bola Tinubu, the Nigerian president. This guy's only 35 years old, y'all. 35 years old. He's got the country on his back, man. Russia is backing him too. Let's see what he has to say, though. It's how Africa is today the poorest continent. Africa is a hungry continent. And how come there are heads of state all over the world begging? These are the questions we are asking ourselves, and we have no answers so far. We have the opportunity to forge new relationships, and I hope that these relationships can be the best ones to give our people a better future. My generation also asks me to say that because of this poverty, they are forced to cross the ocean to try to reach Europe. They die in the ocean, but soon they will no longer have to cross because they will come to our palaces to seek their daily bread. As far as what concerns Burkina Faso today, for more than eight years we've been confronted with the most barbaric and the most violent form of imperialist neocolonialism. Slavery continues to impose itself on us. Our predecessors taught us one thing. A slave who cannot assume his own revolt does not deserve to be pitied. We do not feel sorry for ourselves. We do not ask anyone to feel sorry for us. The people of Burkina Faso have decided to fight, to fight against terrorism in order to relaunch their development. So that is Burkina Faso's interim leader, Ibrahim Touré, who took... Traore, what the fuck is a Touré? Yeah, so 
they they have it. They have it. The West are trying to get the their people, the Echoes leaders, to go over there and fight. And Africans killing Africans for the benefit of the Europeans. Again, tales old as time. Any black American that happened to stumble across my channel by some mistake. Oh. <laughs> if I were to stumble across my channel, a black American, a descendant of of, 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 of slaves, you, you're just having the first hand glimpse into how you ended up, your ancestors ended up uh, being sold over there is with because of people like this people like this that are used by the quote unquote enemy people like this see them these are the are the torn coats these turn coats and judases the same type of people now, after the, the tribes fight, the losing tribe, they capture them and then they sell them off to the Europeans. If you're wondering how come the Europeans that were like the minority back in that particular region of Western Africa, the Arabs, minority over there, Portuguese, or minority over there, ended up enslaving a couple million Africans, shipped them to America to work. Beast of burden. If you want to know how that happened, is because Africans were selling Africans. Africans don't don't do, when they're teaching you, they don't even teach slavery in school no more. But when they used to teach about slavery, they tell you oh, the European scheme and they did this and did that, but they never tell you that they were helped. And this kind of people with this ideology, this kind of mentality, all they care about is power. And stealing the loot, loot. How much do one person need? How much power do one person need? People like this are the ones that did that, that enabled all that to happen during the whole slavery slavery period. So if they're trying to teach you about slavery and they're always talking about all oh, the white people did this, white people did ask your teacher, what about those African leaders that were selling their own people over? They were capturing them and bringing them over to the British and the Portuguese and the Arabs. They're not going to talk about that. These people, these people with this kind of mentality have to go. I don't, they have to go. Africa is not going to go anywhere until the mentality changes, until the leadership changes, until these people are gone. And anyone with that kind of mentality are taken out. Not like taken out, taken out, but like taken out of power. Because we don't condone violence over here. You don't see that now for YouTube. But they, they got to go, man. They got to go. They got to go. Africa have to learn to like work together. Nobody's going to save you. You have to save yourself. Everybody else is trying to take your loot. Everybody else realize the resources you have, but you.